Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Imani and I love all things planner and self-care related. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss new content. In today's video, we're actually gonna plan for the new year. I'm super excited, so stay tuned. So I'm really excited to get this planned out. If you watched a few videos ago, I think I got this during Black Friday. So this is actually the dated vertical weekly planner inserts from cloth and paper in the half letter size, of course. So here's what the inside looks like. I, again, I love lines, so I needed the space to write a to-do list every day. I am using a variation of these inserts um, that came with the November cloth and paper box for December. The only difference is that the first day over here is Sunday and not Monday, but it's the same thing, the same layout other than that Sunday versus Monday start. And I realized that now that I have a weekly layout, I'm actually using fewer daily inserts even on Monday. So. We'll see if that keeps up um, with the busy schedule that I have for January. I imagine that I'll probably use more daily inserts, but for now, if this is all I need, I'm not going to push it. Um, and I'll just be realistic about maybe storing away my daily inserts until we I really need them, right? There's no reason to have them out if I'm not using them. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually write fill this part out here. So I'm not going to write my last name, but I will write my first and middle name here. And I do have a PO box. So if you ever want to say hello, here is the information for that. To be honest with you, I'm one of those people who maybe checks it once a month. So I need to start checking it more often. And that's Buffalo, New York. Okay. Um, I don't remember my cell phone number, <laughs> not my personal number, but I actually do have a work cell number and I just don't remember it. So we're just gonna skip that for now. I think I put it, oh, yep. I put it in the executive notes notebook here. So I'm just gonna copy that as well just so I have it. Um, I don't know if there's enough space for me to write all digits, but we're gonna try to fit it in there. This is why spacing is so important for me because my handwriting, when I say that my handwriting is big, I just feel like it's it can be pretty tall and just full. Maybe full is a better way of seeing that. Two, one, two, three. Um, and then email, we'll just put hello at the, I'm trying to write small here as you can see. I hate that the line isn't long enough for it, but it is what it is. Or my, my email is kind of long. For memo, let's just put if lost, please contact me. that I expect this to be lost. This will be in my half letter, which is personal and self-care planning. So this doesn't leave the house like ever. <laughs> um, so I don't intend for it to be lost, but you never know, especially now that I've said that out loud. So please contact me at the number above. Not my neatest handwriting, but it fit. And I feel like that's what matters. Okay, so this is the first page of the planner here. I think I want to put down, because this will typically stay in my planner, right? So here, 
I think I want to put 2023 goals and to be honest with you I've thought about them but I haven't narrowed them down yet and there are some areas because I like to have my goals geared towards the self-care types I think the problem that I run into is that for some of them I haven't thought of goals yet so we'll just put up here 20 23 goals oh I don't like how I wrote goals but whatever and then I'm gonna grab one of my favorite highlighters this is a zebra mid liner in the color beige I think this is gonna smear yep this is gonna smear okay so that page is done so next up is the year at a glance what I'm going to do here is um, first I'm going to grab some stickers to see if I'm like dropping everything in the process as you can hear, right? I don't know if these are too big for that space or not because I have so many stickers I just don't use and I really want to be intentional about using those. Um, this is that Sedona color, which I think is perfect for fall. Not sure if I want it for the entire year though. Then the Cortado stickers are drop stickers. Hmm, friends, what do we use? What do we use? I don't know if I want Angora. Okay. What I'm going to do instead is just take my favorite highlighter and mark the important days of the year so far. So I know that I want to highlight a few birthdays in here and what I know to be days off. So I believe I have the 16th off from Martin Luther King Jr. Day. My mom's birthday is the 30th. Uh, Valentine's Day is the 14th, Mother's Day is the second Sunday, which would be the 14th. Wow, that's super late this year, it feels like. The 10th is my sister's birthday. Um, the third is my anniversary. August 14th is my brother's birthday, the 11th another anniversary october is my other brother's birthday the sixth is my boyfriend's birthday <sighs> the 26th i know i'm forgetting like so many holidays i think the 29th would be memorial day i have a friend whose birthday is the 27th of April. Okay, so November 26th is my birthday. The 4th is Timber's birthday. 14th is my dad's birthday. We have Christmas, then New Year's. I'm forgetting so many holidays, so let me pull up a calendar and then I will circle back. Okay, so I know for a fact I am like forgetting <laughs> birthdays and holidays which I usually end up remembering when the month begins, but like when the heck is Easter? Easter is the 9th, okay. I'm checking my calendar up here. That's why you have to have a calendar. Uh, March and June look pretty empty, which is, to me, that's concerning. I'm like, <laughs> what did I forget? <laughs> In March and June. Oh, Father's Day in June. Okay. Oops. Um, that's the third Sunday in the month. And then, you know what? I'm not going to push it. That's it. I know Labor Day is going to be the 4th of September as well. That first Monday. Oh, 4th of July. Didn't mark that down either. So... I'm gonna leave this as is. Actually, I think my grandparents' wedding anniversary is the 15th. Okay, so now, <laughs> now I'm done. There, There's something going on every month, which I think that's beautiful. You know, there's like always something to celebrate. So 
So now that we have stressed myself out with that, oh, wow. I guess I could have just turned the page, right? <laughs> it's early and I haven't finished my coffee, so it's all good. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the month. Okay, so the tough part, again, about the goals is that I didn't really parse out monthly goals yet, more so just the yearly goals that I have. But what I can do now is just kind of write the categories of things that I'm interested in. And if I'm able to parse it out, then, you know, I think it works that way. So one of the goals that I have for the year is to read 40 books. And there are 52 weeks in a year, which means I need to read on average about a book a week but maybe less than that. So for January, I'm going to categorize this as a mental goal. I'm gonna say read. Two books. I'm gonna keep it simple like that only because January is going to be a long, hectic month, and I'd rather exceed my expectation than not meet it at all. So, <laughs> goal for January is to read two books. Then, I want to do a physical goal as well. What's feeling off about this but we're gonna keep going because maybe it's just a different planning style for me so physical is workout twice per week bare minimum out definitely fell off during the holidays this year so i'm hoping to kick that back up um financial I made a lot of progress in my financial goals this year, so I'm hoping to continue that. I want to pay off my credit card. I know what it is, it doesn't have lines. I honestly think that's what is holding me up here. Pay off my credit card. Okay, yeah, I don't know why I'm not feeling it, but we're just gonna keep going. <laughs> And hope that it um it fixes itself somehow in the sense that I feel just more comfortable about it because right now I just don't feel comfortable writing something's off so a spiritual goal that I have it's actually almost a physical practice too I want to practice yoga so I want to go to a yoga class at my gym so I want to do Go to yoga class two times this month. Next um, is an emotional goal. And then last will be a digital goal. So emotional, I want to get back to regular journaling. Now I journal sporadically throughout the month, but I think there's many benefits of having a regular journaling routine, whether that is just talking or um, writing, there's art, there's so many different types of journaling, right? So for emotional, I want to do weekly journaling. Sometimes I can go a little bit longer than seven days without journaling. Weekly. Journaling practice. And digital. I want to really limit my TikTok usage. Sometimes I fall down this 
excuse me, I fall down this rabbit hole of just scrolling TikTok endlessly for hours, especially towards the end of the day and especially after a rough work day. So I want to limit TikTok to one hour. And I know one hour still sounds like a lot, but I think the problem is like I'll wake up, scroll for 15 minutes, I will get dressed, scroll for 10, um, you know, commute to work, scroll for five, <laughs> scroll for another 10 at lunchtime, get home, scroll for like 30 minutes. And you know, that's I think more than an hour. So if I can limit it to an hour, I think we'll be good. So I just grabbed another one of my favorite highlighters. This is in the color Olive, I believe. I don't know where all of this ink came from, so don't ask me. I don't know, something bled over, but it still works, so we're gonna use it. And I'm just gonna highlight the categories here and hope that I like this page a little bit more as time progresses, because right now I'm not feeling it. And I think it's my handwriting. Like I just don't like, because it's, you know what it is, it's not wide either, so I have to write down a lot and that never really works all that well with my handwriting so my intention for the month is going to relate to my word of the year so by now you should have watched or have seen a real announcing that my word of the year for 2023 is purpose so my intention for the month of january is to live with purpose with regard to my sort of emotional and mental self-care. So that's really just sticking with all my practices, making sure I'm listening to all my podcasts. Um, I'm doing the deep breathing exercises. I do go to therapy pretty regularly every other week. So sticking with that and really just making sure that I'm using the tools that I learned there. So I'm going to take a few seconds to think about how to articulate that intention in a way that I will want to write it down and not be upset later on in the month. So I'm going to take a few seconds to think about it. Okay, so I took a few seconds to really think about how I wanted to incorporate my word of the year into my intention for the month. So like I said, my word of the year is purpose. And I genuinely believe that I am meant to have less stress in my life right now. Uh, work is kind of stressful and I don't want it to have that much control over me. So what I did was just wrote sort of like an affirmation related to my purpose of living a more peaceful and like less stressed out life due to work and mentioned that like my intention is to practice my mental and emotional habits this month and that's enough to trigger my thought like I know what that means so it's not much detail there but I know that that means that I want to practice my habits in full so listening to the full podcast journaling weekly which is a goal up here and reading the books or reading two books one of which will probably definitely be something related to self-care and through that I was able to tie my word of the year and an intention so that looks great to me so if you watched my last video you know that for 2023 I'm going to continue using my iPad as my digital planner for finances I just hate to leave this blank. So what I'm going to do is just write a few bills that I know I do throughout the month um, because I would just hate to leave this blank. Like I already intend to leave that blank because as you can see, my handwriting is not going to fit over there. So I'll just write a few bills that I'll like an extra reminder on, you know, and honestly, just to take up the space. Let's be real.
So I just used my favorite mod liner. Um, I, I think I call them all my favorite at this point. If I had to choose a favorite, it would probably be beige. But these three right here are like the trinity for me. I love these colors. I think they're great all year round. You'll probably see me using them in even the summer, even though I might take out the copper color one and maybe add like a pink. But other than that, I love beige and I love the olive. But this copper color, I've been using it constantly throughout the fall season. I think probably starting after August. So love it. And that's all I'm going to do here. I'm not even going to really add any of this area over here because like I said, I just needed something down here because I didn't want to leave everything blank. So I'm going to grab my coffee. Next up is the month of January. And I don't know about y'all, but I have a lot going on in January so far. So what I'm going to do is I, I try to look for sticky notes that I thought would work here. And I think I could use some of the dots, but to be 100% honest, I don't want to use the dots. So I think I'm just going to stick with the highlighters here and just kind of color code if I have space to color code and I don't think that I do. Oh, we can put it over here. Okay, because what I'm going to do is birthday meeting and event okay so birthday is going to be the copper color meeting i think we'll use the green and event we're going to use beige because I want to see as much beige as possible. And actually, I'm going to edit event to also say appointment. Okay, don't like that, but it's fine. So what I'm going to do is reference my laptop here. I have my calendar app open. That's actually how I pre-plan. I pre-plan by putting everything in my Cal app. So that's the calendar app through Apple. And what I can do then is just refer to it when I'm ready to plan on paper. So that way I'm not writing everything down. I mean, I guess you could use a sticky note. Not, I know a lot of people plan via a sticky note, but for me, it's a lot easier just to add things as I learn about them in my digital calendar and then add it to my paper plans. So let me plan the month by writing out everything and then I'll come back and explain. Here is the finished product. I think <laughs> this was a really important lesson for me to see it through to the end because when I was done with the writing portion, I looked at it and I'm like, I really do not like this. Like what's not sitting right for me? I didn't know if it was just the pen that I was using because I really do think the pen matters as far as how my handwriting looks. Like it's a little thick and I probably should have used maybe a 0.38 um mm pen instead of or nip size rather than 0.5 but after i i just stuck with it and after i highlighted i'm like okay i like it a little bit better now <laughs> so um as you can see a lot going on especially the first couple weeks of january so i'm kind of mentally preparing for it and in, in the sense that you know sometimes i tend to be a little introverted so a lot of social interaction can be a lot but i have a couple of important meetings coming up I have a birthday to celebrate. Well, technically two birthdays, but one is a birthday party. Then I have meetings. So I'm going to leave it like that. I don't really have anything to fill out for important dates. So I'm actually going to leave that blank, which is really funny. For the notes section, I'm sure something will come up. And I actually think what I want to do is 
write down a few things that may be coming up in February just so I have it right here on this page and can plan accordingly. So let me look ahead at February to see what's coming up and I can write down the important things here. much coming up in February so far. I mean, I do have a few things in mind, but I'm not going to write it just in case it doesn't come together in January. And if it does, I'll write it. If not, oh well, at least I have a few things down. As you can see, I was going to write January. So that February has a little tail coming out of it, but the perfectionist in me is feeling a little icky about it. It'll be fine. So I'm just, that's what I'm telling myself. Like, it'll be fine. Let's not worry. So next up, I am going to be using this insert, also from Cloth and Paper, to create just a brain dump of to-dos in the month of January. Normally, I use the task delegation insert, but I decided to change things up because I realized I actually really like this insert. So what I typically do is write a to-do list on this side. And if there's ever any time I need to change something or I need to write something down in relation to that item, I can do it on this side. So that often comes up with setting appointments or perhaps doing some returns at Amazon. I realized that I needed to jot down a reminder or update that item and I didn't have space to do it on the task delegation. So I'm gonna try it out here. We're gonna see if that works out, but what I'll do now is just speed through this. What I'm gonna do is just write down any to-do thing, to-do items that come up um, as I'm thinking about the new month. Okay, so honestly, this is all I can think of right now. Maybe that's because it is still sort of early to be planning for January. And by early, I mean we're not two or three days away from December when I'm filming this. So I'm gonna leave it as is for now. I will highlight a few important things like my doctor's appointments. Like I know I have one scheduled with my, what do they call it? Like your general doctor, like your overall health doctor. I do want to schedule a specialty appointment and then I want to get back into the dentist, but I need to find a new one. So that'll be some research. And I think that's a good example of needing the space over here because if I call and maybe they don't have any appointments at the moment or they don't take my dental insurance, some other weird quirky issue, I have space over here to write it. And then again, down here, my mom's gift for her birthday that's coming up in January, I have some space on the left to brainstorm some gift ideas. So we'll see how this works. Like I said, when I use the task delegation insert, I wouldn't have space to brainstorm over here, but I do think this will be a good opportunity for me to have space over here to just write notes, reminders, or updates. So don't be afraid to try inserts. Um, and be flexible with it. Sometimes some things are working and in, in one season in your life, it may not work. So this is a good example of just being creative in spaces that you can. And that's what I love again about half letters that you can just pop in inserts as you need them and use them however you want. Well, that's it. I'm gonna put these inserts back into my half letter agenda. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this plan with me. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in a the comment box below or send me a DM or an email. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.